Good morning and welcome to the second phase of our course on algorithms. As we discussed at the beginning of the semester, this phase is going to focus on connections to what are quite popular terms today, big data and data science. And we are going to in particular look at algorithmic foundations and methods that will help us cope with big data. And compared to the algorithmic sections we have studied so far, the future lectures are going to be quite a bit more algebraic in flavor and technical from that standpoint. Uh, the course itself uh, is now shifting gears and therefore going to look at a slightly different view of algorithms, less dependent as we were in the past on graphs and more de dependent on algorithms. I want to just give you a little bit of background about how this came about. This is work that was jointly developed with Professor John Augustine of IIT Madras in India. And each of these topics were further developed in close collaboration with a variety of student colleagues at IIT Madras. The topics that we will be seeing in the first two lectures, this being the first one, were developed with uh, the help of, uh, which we acknowledge, uh, Mr. Ashutosh Ingo. The material itself is sourced uh, from different books and other relevant reference material. And it turns out this first lecture is sourced by uh, using material developed by Professor Sidney Burris here at Rice University. That's the source material and all those acknowledgements are on the first slide. So let us see what this introductory lecture is going to have in it. As we shift gears out of graphs and look at algebra and also subsequently probability, we will just revise some concepts that we have studied a while back, which might, for some of us, have been several years ago, that we'll be using quite often as we move forward. So in today's lecture, I'll be covering topics one and two that you see on the slide, set theory and concepts of vectors and vector spaces. And then we'll continue, of course, also in the same lecture with concepts which involve what it means to multiply a matrix with a vector and algebraically solving systems of simultaneous equations. So let's start with some very basic concepts about set theory, topic number one. And in set theory, what we are going to be looking at are basic definitions. So a set is nothing but a basic collection of objects. So numbers one through four form a set. And since that's a limited or a bounded number of elements, and the elements are these numbers that you see, one, two, three, and four, it's called a finite set. And you could also have, and we quite often do, have infinite sets. So the set of all integers which could be negative or positive, or just positive for that matter, form an infinite set because there is no limit. If you give me some number, say a billion, I could construct a billion plus one, which is also a new member of this set, and would therefore be growing in size and you can't limit it. An infinite set would therefore be a set with no bound on its size, and the set of real numbers which you see as the symbol R and complex numbers, which you see with the symbol C, are standard ways of representing those two infinite sets. And we'll be using them quite often, in particular the set of real numbers. Good, useful to remember it. Z is used typically to denote this set of integers. So we say that, let's say we, get, we have two sets, a set A and a set B, and if every element of A is also in B, we say that A is a subset of B, and we use the symbol that you see here as indicative that A is a subset of B. We also have sets with nothing in it. These are empty sets, they're sets, and they're perfectly valid sets. And an empty set is, of course, a subset of 
every set. Another term that's useful, a concept of a power set of a set S, is the set of all sets, subsets of S. By definition, and this is sometimes useful to remember, S is a subset of itself. So the complete set is also a subset of S, because every element in S is also in S. The way you write symbolically the power set is 2 raised to the power S, let, let's say, and if S is the set of three elements, one, two, three, here is the full listing of the power set, the empty set with nothing in it, one by itself, two by itself, three by itself, one, two in pairs, one, three, two, three, and then all of one, two, three together. So this collectively in the curly braces at the ends is a power set. We will now move to discussing a completely independent topic, which is the basic ideas that I mentioned from algebra. And the two concepts we'll be discussing here are vectors and vector spaces.